the structures, equipment and tools that make our lives safer and easier every day exist because scientists have spent years studying materials. A better understanding of the special properties that make each material useful helps us to choose the right material for a particular design or purpose. Hi everyone, my name is Diasha Govinda and in this series we will examine one of the most fascinating properties of materials, the property of magnetism. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to conduct an investigation to identify magnetic materials and show how a magnetic material can be magnetized. Magnetic materials are all around us and play a very important part in our modern world. But do you know what I mean when I use the term magnetic material? Let's start today's lesson by looking at a definition for this important term. Materials that experience a force of attraction when brought close to a magnet are called magnetic materials. So, what do you know about magnets? Most of you will have played around with magnets and should already know that they attract metal objects. Although magnets are used to make simple toys, they also form part of technology that has changed the world over the last hundred years. Here are some examples of the sometimes surprising and unusual places magnets and magnetic materials are found. A fridge magnet holds all those important notices in place, but the fridge door also stays shut because of the magnets inside the seal. You probably enjoy listening to music, so guess what you'll find inside every loudspeaker you ever see? A very powerful magnet. And of course, if you want to record the latest music video or learn series onto videotape, you'll be using magnetism. All videotapes and audio cassette tapes are covered with a layer of magnetic material. These examples use a similar principle to another useful data storage device, a computer disk. In fact, computers are very sensitive to magnets because data on the machine is stored on magnetic material. Money makes the world go round and no one will deny that ATMs have made our lives a lot more convenient. But did you know that every time you use a bank card, you make use of a magnetic material? The strip at the back of the card carries the information about your bank account in a magnetic arrangement. This information is read each time a card is swiped through a card machine. Some vending machines even identify the coins you insert based on their magnetic properties. It is clear that magnetism plays an important role in modern day technology. But where does it come from? This is a simple question, but it is not as easy to answer as you might think. Magnetism is one of the Earth's great mysteries and scientists only really started understanding and explaining it in the last 350 years. But magnetism was first discovered about 3000 years ago. A legend is told of how an ancient Greek shepherd called Magnus found that the nails in his shoes got firmly stuck to a particular type of dark rock. These stones were called magnetite because the region of Greece in which they were discovered was called Magnesia. At first it was believed that these stones were just mythical objects with magical powers that should only be used by sorcerers and fortune tellers. But then, about a thousand years later, people made another discovery about these unusual rocks. They found that when a piece of this rock was suspended in air on the end of a piece of string, it turned around until it faced in a particular direction. The astonishing thing was that every piece of magnetite that they suspended in this way always turned to the same direction. These rocks were now called leading stones and this term soon got shortened to lodestone. Can you think what this lodestone could be used for? Of course, lodestone could be very useful to determine direction. 
Before the use of lodestones, most sailors and explorers relied on the sun and stars for navigation. The problem with this method was that on a stormy day or cloudy night, they could not work out where they were going and so got completely lost. History tells us that it was the Chinese who invented the first crude compass. And there is some evidence to suggest that the Vikings from Scandinavia used lodestones on their ships called drekas between 800 to 1100 AD. The early explorers noticed that a lodestone always pointed towards the North Star, halfway between the position of the rising sun and the position of the setting sun. They marked the tip of the lodestone that pointed to the star and called the direction that it pointed to north and the opposite direction south. East was the direction of the rising sun and west was the direction of the setting sun. Clearly, lodestones revolutionized navigation, but as you can imagine, having a piece of stone hanging from a string was not very practical, especially not on a boat that is moving around in all directions in a storm. A better design was required, but before this could happen, people first had to find out a little more about magnetism. Because of the legend of Magnus, people knew that iron was attracted to lodestone. But they discovered something else. When an iron nail remained stuck to a lodestone for a while, it appeared to acquire the same magnetic properties as the lodestone. This iron nail could attract other iron objects and would also point to the north when suspended. However, the iron nail did not keep these magnetic properties for long. So, why was this an important discovery? Well, magnetite is the only mineral that exhibits strong magnetism. Most magnetite occurs in very small grains and it is only when a chunk of well-crystallized magnetite is found that it is called a lodestone. We can say that lodestone is an example of a natural permanent magnet. It is always magnetic. But with this discovery, people now understood that some other materials, like iron, can be magnetized by lodestone and behave like a magnet for a period of time to form a temporary magnet. In other words, they identified that iron is a magnetic material. Do you remember the definition of the term magnetic material? Let's have a look at it again. Materials that experience a force of attraction when brought close to a magnet are called magnetic materials. The next interesting development in the study of magnets probably took place in the rooms of a blacksmith's shop. Blacksmiths worked with metal, mostly iron, and made weapons and metal tools. Iron is quite a soft metal and blacksmiths found that they could add different combinations of other substances to iron to make it into a stronger substance called steel. While working with iron, they would heat up the metal, beat it into shape while it was cooling and then heat it up again until they made the tool or weapon that they wanted. When working with steel, they discovered that as it was beaten into shape, it became magnetized. The magnetized steel kept its magnetic properties much longer than an iron nail that had been stuck to a piece of lodestone. So now, instead of using a lodestone, people were able to use a magnetized steel needle to make a compass. Look at the structure for modern compass. The magnetized steel needle is balanced on a sharp point. The needle and point are then enclosed in an airtight container. The needle stays pointing in the same direction, even if the container moves. There is, however, another way to magnetize a steel pin without having to beat it to death. Let's go to the lab and Aaron will show us how to make a steel pin magnet that you can use to make your own compass. Hey there guys, I have a steel pin here. Now I want you to watch closely what happens when I take this steel pin and I put it closer to another steel pin. Are the two steel pins attracted to each other? Obviously not. 
Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to stroke this thole pin here with a permanent magnet. Now watch carefully how I do it. Each time I stroke it, I stroke it in the same direction. Now you have to do this for a couple of minutes. Now watch very carefully what happens now. When I take the still pin and put it closer to this other still pin. Aha. Uh -huh. Can you explain what just happened here? Now when this still pin was stroked with a magnet, it became magnetized. What you're going to do now is to make a water compass. What I'm going to do is to take this magnetized little pin, push it through this piece of polystyrene. Now I'm going to allow the pin to float on top of water in here. Now in what direction do you think the pin is pointing? Could it be the same as the direction of the needle on the compass here? Easy, hey. Why don't you try and make your own water compass? See ya. Thanks, Aaron. That was great. I hope that you guys worked out the following two important points from this demonstration. One, the steel pin was not a magnet to start with. Number two, the steel pin was magnetized when it was stroked with a permanent magnet. So, are all materials magnetic? Obviously not. But how do we know which materials are magnetic and which materials are non-magnetic? By completing today's task, you will be able to answer this question. Conduct an investigation to see which materials are magnetic and which are non-magnetic. Think about this carefully. You will need to select samples of different materials that all have a small mass. You can choose a whole range of materials to test. Bring a bar magnet close to each of your samples and see if there is an attraction between the magnet and the sample. Remember to record your results in a table. You can then use the data in your table to decide which materials are magnetic and which are non-magnetic. Be prepared to discuss your results with other learners in your class. Let's quickly recap the key ideas that we have learned about today. Magnetite, or lodestone, is a naturally occurring permanent magnet. When a magnet is free to move, it aligns itself in a particular direction. The one end of the free-moving magnet points in a direction called north, while the other end points south. A magnet attracts magnetic materials. What about magnetic materials? Well, Magnetic materials are attracted to magnets and can become magnetized themselves. We have found three ways to magnetize magnetic materials so far. One, when an object made of a magnetic material lies next to a magnet, the magnetic material becomes magnetized. Two, when a magnetic material such as iron or steel is hammered, it can become magnetized. Three, when an object made of a magnetic material is stroked with a magnet, the magnetic material will become a magnet itself. Do join me next time when we try to answer the question, why are some materials magnetic and others are not? Until then. Yeah.